Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to lecture number 8 of Images, Imaginations and Cultures. This lecture is titled Images and Mobilities. So, what I plan to do in this lecture is, um, is to talk about the role of mobilities and images in informing each other and also walk you through uh, a more detailed understanding of the idea of mobilities, how social science, particularly sociological inquiry into the concepts of mobility um, have evolved over time through space and in turn how they have um, impacted the idea of study of images. To start with, um, and it is coming from sociologist uh, John Uri's work, the idea of the dynamic linkage between mobility and images has a couple of functions. The first one is to describe the different basis of people's sense of dwelling, including their dependence upon various mobilities of people, presence, photographs, images, information, risks and so on. And the second one is to illuminate the increased mediatization of social life as images circulate increasingly fast and with added reach so as to form and reform various imagined communities. So, there is a lot of dynamism as you can see, uh, the first one, the first function uh, deals with describing different bases of people's sense of dwelling including their dependence upon various mobilities of people. So, it is really talking to questions of geographical mobility, the ideas of um, you know people uh, sort of moving um, you know whether it is form of migration or any other form of mobility um, you know it is talking to geographical sort of mobility. The second idea or the second function is the increased mediatization of social life as images circulate increasingly fast and with added reach so as to form and reform various imagined communities is influenced um, of course by um, Anderson's ideas of imagined communities and um, you know the mobilities that lead to a sense of oneness, a mobilities that since uh, that leads to a sense of imagining um, you know similar communities. So, uh, so these are some of the um, fundamental functions according to Uri um, that he lays out um, that images play a role in um, in the dynamism of mobilities in social life. Um, and in order to understand this dynamism in images uh, that depict various forms of mobility, um, what is important is that we ne need to look at uh, the idea of mobilities or the idea of immobilities also. Um, as a contested paradigm in the making. So, if we talk about um, you know uh, the history of mobility, the history of uh, the rise of mobility studies um, you know it is it's, it's, uh, we see around the early 2000s um, the new mobility turn as I will um, discuss in the next part of my lecture here. Um, but to start with uh, we do look at sociology of mobilities that concerns itself with travels of people, ideas, images, objects, messages, waste products and money across international borders and the implications of these mobilities have for experiences of time, space, 
dwelling and citizenship. So, what you see here is a definitional construct of the idea of mobility and as you can see the variety of vehicles that mobility travels in um, through the form of people, ideas, images, objects, messages, waste products, money across borders and the implications that these mobilities would have on time, space, dwelling and citizenship. So, the reason I need to introduce you to this, you know, overarching idea of mobility here um, is to make you aware that the form of mobility is not one. The forms of mobility are varied, are many and the forms through which mobility um, you know expresses itself is also varied and images objects uh, you know are, are one of the primary vehicles through which mobility expresses uh, itself. So, what we see is that the material transformations um, that are remaking the social especially those diverse mobilities that through multiple senses, imaginative travel, movements of images and information, virtuality and physical movement are materially reconstructing the social as society into the social as mobility. Now, this is a very powerful quote that is again coming from Uri's work that you know mobility as a concept you know is not just diverse but you know it 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 travels through this multiple imaginative um, ways through movements of images um, and you know the material the reconstructing the social so the power of mobility is um, you know lying in the dynamism in the fact that it's transforming or reconstructing the social as society into the social as mobility. So, more and more um, you know mobility is becoming uh, the truth of everyday living um, and you know the idea of society is slowly um, you know um, giving way to the idea of social as mobility. Now, let me also uh, point out here at this uh, point that um, you know the study of mobility uh, or the fact that mobility uh, is present in human societies um, is not a very new concept. In fact, it is you know probably one of the you know you know most um, you know uh, prehistoric sort of dynamics um, that we see because um, you know human history does not give us a moment when human beings have not been mobile. So, mobility has been the truth, has been a practice, has been the attribute of human societies um, you know as far as back um, as early as human civilization. Um, however, what is new is the organized modes of inquiry that are coming up now to study the understanding of human movements and human movement patterns. Um, and uh, you know getting uh, putting them under the umbrella of mobility. Um, so, the extraordinary array of global processes appear to be redrawing the contours of contemporary social experience. So, what this new mobility turn is doing um, is that you know it is putting forward uh, you know new questions in front of us, it is putting forward new ideas, new thinking patterns in front of us um, uh, to question what sort of mobilities are we living in and oftentimes, you know images um, you know photographs, um, various types of frames you know paintings etcetera um, you know play um, you know an enormously important role in in answering these questions. So, um, so some of the uh, questions that we can think of, we can look at um, while understanding mobilities and um, uh, images is that how should sociological inquiry around image and mobilities change with newer visibilities 
in the future, particularly in the digital age. So we are living in an age of information, age of the digital, and um, you know much of our life revolves around the digital. So. Um, you know, how does the nature of inquiry around mobilities and images, for example, um, you know, would change uh, with newer visibilities um, in the digital age? The second question that we need to ponder and we need to think of carefully is how are mobility scales that is local, regional, national, digital, which is um, an introduction of another scale, inflected by social processes of post-colonial and are reconstructed. So here, um, I'm uh, prompting you to adopt a post-colonial lens to critically inquire, to critically examine um, how are these various scales, levels, as we understand them, um, local, regional, national, digital, um, with regard to mobility, um, inflected by social processes in you know they are influenced and inflected by social processes of post-colonial and are reconstructed and the third um, question that I um, uh, I welcome you to think about is how have these negotiations inflected post-colonial realities of mobility and lifestyles in digital India. So how have images um, in a manner, um, you know, helped in negotiations, images help, helped in influencing, inflecting realities, which are, you know, much of it is post-colonial in this regard of mobility and lifestyles in digital India. So I'm pushing um, your thought process more um, in the context of the digital here because um, you know this is an upcoming area of inquiry for mobilities and the image, um, and uh, possibly you will find it helpful if you think along um, these lines of um, questions and critical inquiry. So. Um, as we think of these questions, um, let me also introduce you to the idea of um, the mobility turn. What do we mean by um, you know mobility um, and the mobility turn? You know, since the early two thousands, um, we see in the works of Hannam, Scheller, and Uri um, that you know the conversations, the scholarly conversations around mobility um, started and mostly around uh, ideas of people and objects crossing space and time. And the image that you see uh, on the screen um, is probably an image of mobility we all have in mind when we talk of movement, when we talk of mobility. Um, you know, probably the first thing that we think of um, is transportation, right, or technology, for example. And so, um, you know, following up from Uri's and Scheller's uh, work, um, we see future scholars have talked about technology and transportation that broadened the possibilities for people being mobile in the world, which means that mobility is a normal state for stable populations. So what we are establishing here is not just that um, mobility is a state of human population, but it, mobility is a normal state of being uh, in a human society. So technology and transportation um, have played a vital role behind the scenes or um, uh, explicitly that has, uh, you know, that has broadened the possibilities, that has broadened the conceptualization of mobility um, for people um, in across um, societies. And one of the definitions, um, you know, that um, we can use for this purpose is the one that you see um, here. From walking to electric flows, from driving to transportation, to virtual mobility, from refuge to migration, from tourism to pilgrimage, um, you know, all of these would come under the umbrella of mobility. And so you see the range of movement that the idea of mobility is capturing. And the reason I am introducing you to this definition of mobility is also to broaden, to um, give you the scope, the broad scope of images 
um, that relate to the idea of mobility. So, from walking to electric flow. So, you know, as I'm as I'm going through the definition, just keep some images in your mind that may just um, you know refer to these practices from walking to electric flows, from driving to transportation to virtual mobility, from refuge to migration to from tourism to pilgrimage. So you can see the range of images that would come to your mind as you read through um, this definition of mobility. So what has happened um, um, over the years, uh, over the past few years uh, in developing um, this, this idea of mobility um, has been that um, the tracing of movements of people, objects and symbols um, has been developed to an understanding which transcends the dichotomy between transport research and social research, putting social relations into travel and connecting different forms of transport with complex patterns of social experience conducted through communications at a distance. So this definition is telling us that the movement of people, objects, symbols, um, you know, has given way to an understanding that, you know, when we talk of transport research or when we talk of, um, you know, social research, um, you know, putting social relations into travel and connecting different forms of transport with complex patterns of social experience conducted through communications at a distance is actually, you know, traversing the continuum of mobility that we um, have seen in the previous slide. So, um, so the range of mobility, as we see, um, you know, um, has been um, quite broad in that respect. So here, um, I would um, take you back to um, two of the images that we had started with um, in the first lecture that I had shown you. Um, and this is the first image where um, we saw um, the, uh, this is an image of a railway track that you are seeing. And um, in the background, you know, you are seeing, um, you know, mountains and you see a natural environmental setting. So, um, the question is, um, you know, this is a very powerful image that speaks to idea of mobility. This is a very powerful image that talks about, um, you know, transportation, um, you know, development of technology as well as human mobility. So, um, as the photographer um, describes here that, um, you know, focuses on um, the questions of identity of place using both visual and traditional ethnographic methods. And, you know, the photographer captures the intention of capturing this image um, is a dual focus, which is industrial heritage on one hand and human nature interactions um, on the other, right? So this is the intention of the photographer to capture this image. But what we are looking at is also um, question of mobility um, as, as is apparent in this image. So um, I'm taking you back to my first uh, couple of lectures where I talked about the relationship between the photographer, the image and the viewer, right? So here we have all of three coming together um, on questions of the image and mobility. And you see that, you know, the photographer has an intention, an agenda of creating an image, in this case of photograph. Um, and then the spectator, the viewer can come in from another vantage point also to take a look at the image and come up with a new sort of explanation. So I'm using this as a case and example to demonstrate to you, um, you know, how an image in this case uh, speaks to questions of um, mobility, as you can see. 
In fact, um, the another picture from the same series um, that uh, we looked at in the first um, lecture is this is the second prize winner um, where we see um, again you know an image of mobility or in this case possibly immobility and then um, you know we connect as a spectator with the image you know relating to questions of mobility as well as immobility. So as you see in the description that um, uh, the last line of the description I remember that nobody stopped the game they continued as if nothing happened. So the continuity is um, sort of ensured um, at the same time um, you know the image in very powerful ways is talking about transportation talking about issues of mobility social or um, you know uh, physical. So um, this, these two are just images I wanted to uh, bring back to you um, on the questions of um, mobility uh, as we talk about images and mobility and now I am going to go back to a more detailed uh, you know understanding of movement versus mobility. So when we talk of the idea of mobility and we talk of uh, movement the question is um, are these the same that you know are we talking about uh, movement and mobility as synonyms to each other and the answer is possibly no. Um, so mobility uh, we, see, we see as movement imbued with either self ascribed or attributed meanings analytically speaking movements as brute acts of motion become mobilities when they gain meaning as experienced and imagined sociocultural assemblages. So this is very important that movements um, you know which is any sort of brute acts of motion they become mobilities and when they gain meaning as experienced and imagined sociocultural assemblages. People are moving all the time but not all movements are equally meaningful and life shaping both for those who move and for those who stay put. So you see this idea of analytical um, you know uh, reflection on the idea of when a movement becomes mobility is very very important uh, you know when we look at images. So not all um, you know images of movement um, would be images of mobility. So I hope you get the difference that an image that shows movement may not be an image that shows mobility. For an image to be able to show mobility um, that is you know th the movement has to become mobility they have to gain meaningful experience and um, you know have imagined socio cultural assemblages. So when the movement is meaningful when the movement is with an agenda then it becomes um, you know all the more meaningful and it becomes mobility and it is no longer just movement. So people are moving all the time but not all movements are equally meaningful and life shaping both for those who move and those who stay put. So you know movement has been the truth of human civilization yes but um, you know the, the actionable part of movement you know the agenda behind movement um, you know is, is what renders um, movement its mobility. So mobility is constituted not only by movement but also by meaning or ideological representations and by power be it economic, symbolic or political. So mobility uh, you know the transition from movement into mobility is constituted not only by the movement but also by a meaningful um, 
ideological representations. And this is something, um, you know, we have dealt with in, our, in my previous lectures also, that the question of representation then becomes, uh, you know, utterly import, important in this um, respect. And um, representation um, or, or, you know, the symbolic meaning, the ideological meaning um, and the power that it is, uh, you know, um, showing, um, you know, it is, it is using uh, the image as a vehicle to show is of super importance in this case and the, the nature of power um, can be economic, symbolic or political. So, um, having said that, the connections between um, uh, sort of specific uh, phenomena of movement and mobility um, still uh, remain vague. Um, not least because differentiating between mobility as a social practice and as a theoretical approach is often not clearly identified. And so, um, when we deal with images, um, you know, that show us movement of any sort, um, the question uh, to ask is that, is this an image of movement only that you see motion or is this an image that is giving us a sense of mobility that is with an agenda, movement with an agenda. And with it, um, you know, are we looking at, um, you know, meanings, uh, meaning, meanings of uh, representation? Are we looking at ideological representations? Are we looking at power negotiations? So, what sort of meaningful attachments, um, you know, can we get from these images? And this, you know, brings us back to our uh, previous lectures of, you know, what is the relationship, the dynamic relationship between the viewer and the viewed. So, whoever is viewing the photograph or the image or the artwork, what is that, uh, you know, sort of dynamic dynamism that is, um, you know, in place here. So, one thing I do want to clarify um, at this point here is that we are talking of two concepts here. One is mobility and one is immobility, but I am not talking about them as binaries. I am not talking about, um, you know, either mobility or immobility. Because oftentimes, um, they would not exist as binaries. So, um, you know, they should not be mobility and immobility should not be conceptualized as two binary poles. In fact, um, scholars have pointed out that people often experience both at the same time, both mobility and immobility at the same time people are somehow mobile and somehow immobilized. So, when we think of our experiences, mobility experiences, um, you know, at any given point of time, we are mobile um, as well as we are immobile in certain ways. So, mobility uh, or mobilization and sedentarism, which is uh, or immobility, um, must be regarded as structurally interwoven states in many respects. So, mobility and immobility, they inform each other and they are coexisting and it is not that, you know, they are existing as either or in many respects. Uh, so, um, you know, they can, they are often only temporal and fluid states moving and settling alternately and in an interrelated way. So, you know, both mobility and immobility are, um, you know, temporal, they are not uh, static or absolute uh, and, you know, they are fluid, they are not, uh, you know, uh, static, they are dynamic um, in their sense. So, this is something that I would like you to keep in mind, uh, you know, when you are looking at an image also is that, uh, you know, uh, you know, you, if you are looking at an image of mobility, um, you know, also try to capture the message of immobility in that image. So, for example, 
if I go back to um, you know these two images that we have um, seen, you know in both this uh, images, both these photographs, um, we do see questions of mobility as well as immobility uh, that is implicit or explicit in both uh, the images. So, that is something I would uh, urge you to think um, carefully when we talk of um, mobility and immobility as um, you know coexisting and not as binaries. Um, so, with that, um, let me also take you through um, briefly on the various um, debates around mobilities and immobilities. Um, so, when you actually um, you know look at um, images, when you actually um, you know analyze images through the mobility lens, um, you may find it helpful to bring in this um, you know tool uh, kit to uh, you know unpack the ideas of mobilities. So, the first approach or um, what I call here strand 1 um, of mobility, it links mobility to positively attributed meanings which are based in a capitalist neoliberal sort of um, discourse. So, it emphasizes a freedom of movement. And we do see much of the research dealing with mobilities through references, um, through migration, tourism, pilgrimage, walking, driving and it evolved as a changing discourse from matters of fact to matters of connection. So, the first strand of mobility um, is a discursive journey that we see here um, that talks about um, you know um, this neo neoliberal discourses of connectivity. So, increasing uh, mobility inheres the ability to move and the freedom to move and the possibility of flexible changes. So, with this background in context, um, if we understand spatial mobility is often understood as social mobility at the same time that you know we are not just talking about geographical mobility, but we are also talking about um, you know social mobility. But um, you know scholars have argued that um, you know this um, you know is, is in a way is a descriptive way of seeing the mobile world, um, which sees the changes of mobility that is practiced, but not really on the representations that is linked with this mobility. So, that brings us to the second strand of debate um, that looks at um, the evolution of the idea of mobility. So, the first strand um, gives us a descriptive viewpoint of the scope, um, you know the broadening scope of mobilities. But the second point um, actually brings in um, you know the focus on power relations in mobility. So, it brings in questions of representation which is rather um, you know contested and um, you know the, it looks at human movement or mobility as a form of um, physical mobility which is shaped by structural constraints and therewith connected to power. Um, so, it is focusing on power relations and therewith um, it is also um, focusing um, on immobility as well. So, if you are looking at uh, for example, uh, um, you know images of human movements, images of migrations um, that are best analyzed and understood with and not in contrast to other types of movements. So, what you need to look at is um, you know a more multiscalar um, frame in which all forms of movement whether um, you know across boundaries, districts, geographical spaces should be conceptualized as a practice within a singular framework. So, research um, we see that uh, dealing with mobility with regard to power relations uh, you know um, has 
looked at only one form of mobility that is migration studies. Um, and um, you know a lot of these movements, a lot of these uh, mobilities um, are sort of uh, not captured in that study. So, I urge you if you are interested um, to pursue along these lines of academic inquiry, um, this is a great moment for you to uh, you know adopt a lens of mobility and look at images um, you know beyond conventional ideas of mobility such as migration. So uh, you know I urge you to think of more types of social mobilities um, and how images may actually um, you know represent those sorts of uh, mobilities. So having said that. Uh, let me also walk you through the academic scholarly journey that mobilities um, as, as a discipline has, um, uh, mobilities as an area of inquiry has traveled and particularly, uh, just going back to the previous slide, um, particularly this journey has been along the second strand uh, of debates that we see around mobility that is around questions of power, questions of um, power negotiation, um, knowledge production, etc. So we see that and, and this is also situating uh, much of my work on mobilities um, um, you know over the last few years um, that we see that you know as early as the 1990s um, we do have ideas of mobility um, you know that is being equated with power geometries um, you know a conceptual framework forwarded by um, Doreen Massey's work uh, that we looked at in the first uh, lecture. And then you know um, we see in the early 2000 we have looked at John O'Reilly and Mimi Scheller's work today um, in this lecture on the idea of uh, the mobility turn. Around the same time we see that mobility is the idea of mobility as a knowledge object rather than a scientific um, identified subject um, you know was put forward by Andres et al. And then uh, um, we bring in a more nuanced um, understanding of mobility in the form of uh, you know uh, bringing the question of power negotiation um, you know front and center in the context of mobility which we accomplish in um, in a journal article titled migration as mobility which is which uh, where we um, you know adopt an intersectional approach and we take that model to uh, a special issue journal also um, where we talk about uh, post-colonial intersections um, Asia on the move. And finally, um, very recently my co-author and I were able to bring all of this together and uh, you know look at uh, the panning out of mobilities uh, or immobilities in gender family um, and the IT professionals in digital India. So you can see that the you know the, the journey that mobility has traveled, um, and this is only a you know a microscopic view um, of the journey of mobility uh, that uh, that it has traveled. But I'll I'll just walk you through a couple of these um, works because I believe that if you encounter with any such um, you know images that uh, that you may find helpful to uh, understand mobilities um, a little better. So for example, um, in, the, um, in the paper where um, I, my co-author and I question migration as mobility. So you know we have seen in the start of the um, lecture today that the questions of mobility um, particularly in the second strand of uh, debate uh, has been primarily around questions of migration. And so an important question here is to ask that um, you know is migration equated with mobilities and is migration the only form of mobility. And so you know what do we do with images for example um, you know that is that is of mobility but not of migration. So where do we situate migration and mobility uh, and you know how can we conceptualize migration as a fruitful contribution to the emergent field of mobility studies. So 
saying that um, you know the the idea of migration is very much a part of the idea of mobilities but uh, you know when we conceptualize mobility or, or when we conceptualize migration um, we have to be careful um, you know when we look at the various forms of um, migration so additionally how can migration provide a nuanced lens um, to the existing debates on mobilities and therewith contribute to an analytically driven approach to mobility. For example, um, in the opening definition today, you have seen that um, the, the case of mobility would travel from transportation to, um, uh, to any form of social mobility to migration and even within migration you have various types of migrants, for example, um, refugee versus, um, you know, a tourist. Uh, versus um, a pilgrim. Uh, so all of these, um, you know, people or groups of people um, would be, um, you know, coming under the idea of mobility, but their migration purposes, the agenda of their mobility would be very different. And so, you know, when you look at images, for example, um, you know, of a pilgrim, or when you look at an image of, for, for example, um, you know, a refugee, or you know, forced migration, or or or, you know, displacement. So you know, each of these images would be uh, carrying you know very different representational symbolic meaning for us, um, as would. Um, not be possible if we call all of them as mobilities. So this is what I'm trying to, uh, you know, tell you here is that when you look at images which has some sort of mobility, some sort of movement captured in it, try to capture the nuances um, that the image is offering. You know, just uh, summing up everything under the idea of mobility um, would often mean that we are not capturing uh, the nuances that fall within um, that uh, you know image scope scope of that image. So that is one um, idea that I would like you to keep in mind. Um, the second idea um, that I would uh, like you to keep in mind is um, the scale of um, an image when you are looking at um, particularly with regard to um, mobilities uh, images. Um, that you know what scale of image are you looking at? Are you looking at a local sort of a setting? Are you looking at um, a global image? Are you looking at a transnational sort of um, an image. So, what is the scale of the image that you are looking at and that is going to speak for um, you know the scale of uh, um, the, the mobility uh, that you are trying to understand um, in the, through the image. The second um, uh, you know aperture I want to open up for you here is that um, how would you frame, um, you know, uh, the theoretical understanding of an image um, that you would look at through a post-colonial lens? And um, mind you, here, um, you know, I'm not using um, post-colonial theory as a singular theoretical framework, but um, I, I, I acknowledge post-colonial theory here as an interrelated set of critical and counterintuitive perspectives. Um, and so um, the question here is that um, these counterintuitive perspectives and inquiry have undergone immense transformation in the digital revolution of the 21st century. So, when you are looking at uh, you know images of mobility and trying to understand um, them through a post-colonial sort of an analytic lens, you know what type of inquiry, what are the questions that you're going to ask, uh, you know would be very very important. So you can use mobilities as an analytical lens um, to view such an image. Um, 
if you want to look at you know some of these power negotiations power dynamics um, you know you know some of the power um, dynamics around intersectionality um, you know that is one lens um, you can adopt um, and you can also look at questions of epistemology so um, I mean, when I say that uh, the digital revolution of the 21st century um, has redefined relationships of the image with the society and the questions of mobilities that we are asking, um, you know, are very different than, um, than we were asking you know, maybe 10 years or 20 years uh, back. Um, so, um, but the question then remains that, uh, that the, the, the idea of human mobility has remained as a constant, but what has changed over the years is these this questions um, with, rela with relate to the social, um, changing social order. And, um, you know, there has been a shift in discourse since the last decades with the advent of the digital revolution where post-colonial discourses have been recrafting the very definition and production of mobility. And I say this um, with, with an image in mind of tourist sites, tourism. So for example, um, you know, just imagine, um, you know, an, an, an image of a heritage tourist site pre-pandemic and post-pandemic. So we all live in, um, you know, this moment of a pre and a post pandemic and, um, you know, um, or are, are, are pre pandemic be pre digital also. So the very fact of an image of, you know, experiencing an image um, or, or a photograph taken on site at a heritage, um, you know, tourist site versus um, looking at uh, you know a digital form of that image or um, you know even further uh, talking about technological advancement you know creating a digital twin of the heritage site so how would the experience of image you know be different in each of these three cases one is a you know a, a pre pandemic pre digital sort of um, you know a, an idea of a paper based uh, image um, to the idea of transitioning to an image uh, based uh, idea of digital image based idea of mobility to um, you know a technological advancement to AR and VR sort of experiencing uh, you know a tourist site through that sort of an image. So epistemologically what has been or what is the nature of that journey of mobility through images is something um, you know, that is very interesting um, that you, you know, if you wish, you can um, explore a little further. And on that note, um, uh, you know, when we talk of the changing nature of images through mobilities, um, uh, you know, over time and space, um, globalization has a major, major role to play um, in this dialogue. So we, we see that, uh, the globalization literature has described um, a wide variety of new objects, new machines, new technologies with dramatically compress or shrink time and space. So we have been talking about the ideas of time and space and here we talk about, we are seeing that the advent um, of new technologies, new machines, um, et cetera, um, puts, that in, puts us in an era of globalization where all of this um, have contributed to shrinking of that time and space. So globalization entails that infrastructural development and it's routed literally or symbolically across social borders. And this, um, in a way, you know, um, puts us various different images um, in our mind, images of mobility, uh, for example, um, an image of fiber optic cables, uh, image of jet planes, image of audiovisual transmissions, digital television, computer networks, internet, satellites, um, faxes, etc., etc. So we see that the nature of images, um, you know, 
would have been changing with the nature of changing, um, you know, uh, mobilities, um, and particularly given the questions of globalization and increasing broadening networks. So, these technologies, um, you know, the, with the evolution of technologies, these technologies they carry people, they carry information, they carry money, they carry images, um, and they also carry risks along with them. And they flow within and across national boundaries and in increasingly brief moments of time. So, what is happening is this in in this moment of globalization, um, you know, a, a lot of these mobilities, um, you know, are changing in nature. And the types of images that we are seeing around us, you know, or in our minds, um, you know, are very, very different. Um, and, and that calls in for new um, areas, new questions of inquiry, and new um, analytical lenses to be devised to understand the changing um, global order. So, um, just uh, coming to the conclusion of um, this topic, um, that some characteristics of imaginative travel by which distant events, personalities and happenings are mundanely brought into the living room and transform everyday life. As a consequence, we imagine ourselves sharing events, experiences and personalities with many others with whom we constitute certain kinds of community. This in turn is in turn to revisit a somewhat similar argument in Anderson's conception of the nation as an imagined community. Also, of course, imaginative travel brings into home images of other places which provide a kind of imaginative travel which is complexly intertwined with many processes of corporeal travel. So, again, the questions here are multifold. One is, um, we are talking about the changing nature of travel, you know, whether um, we are talking about imaginative travel, we are talking about social uh, mobilities, you know, the, the multiple ways in which mobilities, um, you know, f construct and reconstruct themselves. And then, you know, it brings together, um, you know, the ideas of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the changing natures of questions that we are asking in this regard. So, I will now conclude this lecture with three very powerful images um, that relate to questions of um, mobility and immobility and all three um, images are taken from um, the third jo annual John Ure lecture of 2020. It is available um, on YouTube and here is the link um, if you want to take a look at um, any of these um, lectures. And all three um, of these images that you see um, were used by um, Mimi Scheller's uh, talk as part of this uh, lecture. So, the first one that you see um, is stagnant um, cruise ships. And um, these are captures that have been taken during the, um, you know, pandemic moment, the COVID-19 pandemic moment. And um, what you see in the image is not just, uh, you know, cruise ships, but they are lined up and they are stagnant. And, um, you know, this, this, so there is a sense of mobility and immobility, um, you know, implicit in this image um, as you look at uh, these stagnant cruise ships. Um, images of, you know, um, aeroplanes, you know, uh, parked on, um, you know, the runways and desert. Um, again, you know, it's a, it's a pandemic moment of mobility and immobility that you're looking at. Um, you know, travel comes to a complete halt um, and then mobility, questions of mobility and immobility are, uh, you know, a part of uh, this image. And finally, um, you do see that, uh, again, the pandemic story of um, being stranded in airports um, and, and you see, you know, um, people suddenly caught off guard and, you know, the, the uh, you know, the, the lack of mobility, you know, the immobility that the, you know, people faced um, 
uh, during journeys um, uh, and on the road. So I do want to end um, here with this question of uh, you know mobility and immobility and uh, you know viewing uh, images that how should sociological inquiry around image and mobilities change with newer visibilities in the future particularly in the digital age and this is something that I keep on and on um, you know reiterating because we are living in a digital age and the the nature of inquiry the nature of research um, is also changing and so I urge you I welcome you to think carefully along these lines and you know think ponder along lines of changing natures of sociological inquiry particularly when you see um, you know visual culture particularly around images and mobilities um, and how these might change with newer visibilities in the future particularly in the digital age and with that I come to a conclusion of this lecture thank you Hello, I am Shikha Dikshit, I teach psychology and I am with the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences at IIT Kanpur. Uh, today I am going to talk about what is health psychology. In the recent past, health psychology has emerged as one of the important areas in psychology. It is a field of study where psychological theories and concepts are applied to understand issues regarding health and illness. The two major themes which health psychologists are interested in studying are the themes of illness experience and behaviors associated with that experience. Uh, contemporary health psychology adopts various uh, and diverse kind of perspectives to understand health and illness issues. These perspectives include the behavioral perspective, the societal perspective and the cultural perspective. If we uh, try to enumerate the kind of topics that health psychologists study, <coughs> the range is very wide. To name a few of the topics, health psychologists study uh, cognitions related to illness that is health and illness related cognitions, social cognitive aspects of health and illness cognitive adaptation, uh, chronic illness and uh, adaptation to chronic illness, disability, stress and management of stress. Uh, cog uh, health psychologists also study topics such as health related quality of life, social support and various kinds of coping mechanisms that people adopt to deal with illness, illness experience. In addition to this kind of experience, health psychologists also study uh, health, health care systems, health promotion and treatment related aspects including doctor patient relationships. So as we see the range of topics is very large. Health psychologists also use uh, qualitative methods and they study uh, topics such as narratives of illness experience as well as social representations of health and illness. So uh, we see that the range of these topics is very large, however this is not an exhaustive list. More recently some health psychologists have adopted a critical health psychology approach. These health psychologists are, uh, they offer a critique of mainly of the biomedical and behavioral uh, perspective of health and illness as well as the methods and approach which is used to understand health and illness. So critical health psychologists focus on the social, cultural issues 
If we look at the methodological aspects, overall health psychologists adopt a quantitative methodology. They also use qualitative methodology. Health psychologists use uh, the mixed method approach.